Well, good morning. I would just uh, like to continue our Lenten teaching series on the Mass. So today's question I'd like to answer is, why does Mass have to be a requirement? Can I just worship God in my own way? So sometimes people come up to us and may ask us, you know, with the the pandemic, especially the coronavirus pandemic we just had, why can't I just stay home at Mass? Why can't I just stay home at and watch the mass on TV. Well, for during, so during that time, of course, there was an exception, and the Archbishop granted that exception. But the norm is to come here to the mass to worship God in the way he wishes us to worship him. And I'll get into that today. So back in the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, they would worship God in the way he desired. He desired to worship God by bringing forth an animal. An animal will be brought forth to the priest. The priest would then take that animal, slaughter it on the altar, pour half its blood on the altar, and pour half and sprinkle half its blood on the people. Aren't you glad we're not in the Old Testament? With the old with the blood being sprinkled on you. That would be just kind of gross. But that's the way they used to do it. That's the way God wanted it back in the Old Covenant. They would take an animal, they'd slaughter it. Well, they, they would bring it, the people would bring it to the priest, and they would, he would slaughter it and do that. But then what's important is that so that the priest would stay, in the, would be in the sanctuary, and the, pre, the people would be outside of the sanctuary. And they would bring their offering to the priests, and that priest would do the, uh, the slaughtering, and then they would carry out the, the rite itself, the way the God asked them. So, and that's also the reason for a, an altar rail. An altar rail, you see in some churches, is established so as to show the difference between the sanctuary and where the people are. The sanctuary, of course, is where me, the priest would be going into the sanctuary, but then the people would be able to come up but not go into the sanctuary. And that's where the significance of an altar rail is. And also, that's also why we have a distinction between the carpeting area where the congregation sits and that's also in the tile area where I, myself, and the deacons would uh, sit here. So the so three most important things would, would be when offering a worship, worship to God in the Old Covenant, and that is the priest, the offering itself, the animal, and the people gathered physically. Of course, now, thankfully, Jesus, the Lamb of God, has fulfilled that covenant. And we don't necessarily have the sprinkling of the blood on us that we had with the Old Covenant, but we do get to receive Jesus, the Lamb of God, into our lives, into our bodies, his body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. What a blessing that is. We still get to receive Jesus, and that same sacrifice of Jesus, the Lamb of God, takes place on this altar, but as in Hebrews, in Hebrews you know, the book of Hebrews says, it's, but it's an un, in an unbloodied manner, and not in a bloody kind of way. That's the new covenant that Jesus has established for us. And we carry it out through the gift of the church. And so we come here to the Mass. We offer our lives as a sacrifice along with this sacrifice of Jesus in the Eucharist. We offer it through the hands of the priest to God the Father. And we get to receive that living sacrifice, Jesus himself, in the Eucharist. And that's how those three things work. That's what we do in the new covenant with Jesus.